When the UK shut down its doors back at the end of March last year, public concern about COVID-19 went through the roof. We didn't know much about the virus. The priority was to be ready to at least soften the blow of one of the most destructive pandemics we've seen in recent times. For someone like me, who's an infectious disease epidemiologist, it was what we'd been waiting for and dreading. But actually what we did know was that we needed really good surveillance. Who was getting infected, how it was spreading through society, how durable it was, they were all unknowns. And that's why the REACT study was so important. The REACT study stands for Real-Time Assessment of Community Transmission. Imperial College London and Ipsos Mori as a logistics partner were commissioned to run the study, collect the data, analyse the data and then make the data available to government, to the public and to the scientific community. At the time, most of the infections rate were based on people with symptoms coming in to acquire a test. What we wanted to know is what is the prevalence of this, even in the asymptomatic population across the country. We randomly approach people regardless of their health status. So it doesn't matter whether they've got symptoms or they've not got symptoms, we're getting much less bias in our picture of where the infections are. We approach named individuals off the register of patients on the GP record. We can look in detail at how the virus is being spread across the population, in different areas of the country, in different types of people such as by ethnic group, by occupation, by age, by sex and so forth. The scale of a programme like REACT needs an awful lot of different skill sets coming to the table and you do want best in class for both research, design and logistics and participant experience management. Ipsos Mori is one of the, the largest market and social research businesses in the UK. We've been involved from the very beginning of the study. We've got quite a large uh, prevalence in the 25 to 34 age group. The REACT 1 study was an absolutely enormous job for Ipsos Mori, the largest single study we've, we've ever undertaken. It involved working around the clock to set up the, the, the method, to set up the supply chain, to set up internal processes and mechanisms to, to, to enable us to send out letters to millions of people uh, each month. If you are randomly selected to do REACT, we will send you an invitation letter to take part. When you decide to take part, you register online on the day of collection, you do your swab test and do another online survey and then your swab will be transported to the laboratory and within about two or three days, we tell you your result. The data go every day to Imperial College. I'm really interested in this graph here. You can see there's been a big increase. When we receive the data, we then estimate the prevalence of the virus uh, by different socioeconomic groups and we then adjust that to be representative of the population of England as a whole. So we try and give the best overall estimate for the prevalence of people testing positive in England at any moment in time. Then we break it down. So we look at how that separates out by geography, by region, and how it separates by, out by age group, and then lots of other potential risk factors. We also look at what can lead to increased levels of prevalence, so occupation, are teachers getting more infected? Are people who work in transport getting more infected? And that can really help target some of the intervention measures that are used. As soon as positives are identified, they get sent to a second lab where they're sequenced. Um, and then once we've got the genetic code for those, we can say whether they're a variant or not. During spring 2021, um, we did see a few samples of the Delta variant emerging in London um, before it was kind of being recognized. The REACT data were on the dashboards of every policymaker in the country, and that's how national decisions were made. Good afternoon. Numbers speak for themselves. They're increasing, and um, they're not going to decrease quickly. And I think it's likely that some measures of restriction are going to need to be in place for a while. To try and the REACT study became incredibly important when governments were having to make very, very difficult, life-changing choices you could see a trend of something going up or down quickly and say, look, this, is, this now means you've got to accelerate what you need to do. Personally, it's been a great privilege to work on a study which has produced really, really valuable data at a time of national crisis. It's been a, truly a team effort. There's a huge number of people who've worked incredibly hard. I don't think any data set this big with this much information has really ever existed before. It's really one of a kind. 
and it's great to just be working on it as a PhD student. In the first few rounds of React, 30% of people who received a letter from us um, eventually completed the survey and gave us a, a, a decent sample. We just, we couldn't have done this without the support of the public.